Hello and welcome to No Rest for the Weekend, where we go behind the scenes and talk to the creators of independent entertainment. I'm Jason Godby, and in October, we attended the NAB show here in New York City. I had the chance to talk to some of the exhibitors there about what they had to offer filmmakers and content creators this year. Now, I just want to add a disclaimer uh, for this episode. We are not endorsing any of the following brands, and we're not sponsored by any of them. The interviews here are meant to inform, not advertise, just so you know. But without further ado, let's go to the NAB Show 2019. I'm here with Tom Cubby from Sony and this beautiful boy right here. Uh, t what are we looking at here, Tom? This is the uh, new, brand new PXW FX9. Actually, it's the FX9K because it's including the kit lens here. Uh, so this is our brand new camera from Sony. It is a brand new full frame 6K sensor. So full frame sensor can operate in both full frame mode and Super 35. It's using our, our new Exmor R technology, so that's a backlit sensor, which improves sensitivity and dynamic range. So we're getting about 15 plus stops of dynamic range with this new camera. Who are you seeing it mainly for? Like, would you use this on a dock? Are you talking features, short films? Like, what, what would be the main uh, customer for this camera? Yes. <laughs> All the above. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, when the FS7 series came out, we got asked that same question, and we kind of pigeonholed it into one area, but then we found out that the camera was so amazing, it just ended up everywhere. So I would imagine we're going to get even more expansion with this model because of so many new features on the camera. So for instance, that new full-frame sensor has fa uh, fast hybrid autofocus built into the sensor. So we use a combination of phase detection, P-H-A-S-E, with contrast-based focus to get very fast and accurate focus. So the phase detection detects how fast or how far away the subject is, and then the contrast base makes it very accurate. So the combination of the two, along with all the different parameters for how fast or slow you switch, how fast or slow the focus is, makes it a really powerful function. Here's what I've been asking with some of these cameras, because a lot of these, you have to do so much build out just to get it to work. How well does this thing work out of the box? Perfectly right out of the box. That was the whole idea behind the FS7 series, was be able to have a camera that's so ergonomically great right out of the box. And the, you, don't, you can configure it with extra things, but you certainly don't need to. And especially now, with a lot of the feature sets we're building into the camera, uh, again, Sony being the only one to have a variable ND filter. So we were the first ones to do it on third inch sensors, first to do it on Super 35 sensors, now the first and only as well to do it with a full frame sensor. So variable ND, dual base ISO. So that's something new. Now what Sony's done is taken all the great things that you get from an FS7 series camera and taking technologies from our Venice series camera and from our Alpha 7 series camera, right? That's where the fast hybrid autofocus comes from. On the Venice side, the technology of dual base ISO. So the concept there is you have two ISOs that are both base ISOs. So when you switch between those ISOs, there's no change in your dynamic range and the relative noise levels are the same as well. So 800 ISO when you're in those brightly lit outdoor environments, 4,000 when you get those night scenes and low lit scenes, and it's super, super clean. So if you're shooting a dock and you're outdoors and, or, and it's nighttime and you got to capture a scene, you could literally shoot at 4,000 ISO and it's clean. As a base, yes, that's correct. How are people getting this camera? Are, are you guys going to retail this? Is it strictly through rental houses? Are you working directly with production companies? How are people getting it out? Uh, the same way we always do, you know, rental houses are excited about this camera, so they're going to stock up on it, so you'll be able to get those. The camera's going to ship in the January time frame. We're pushing for early de um, December, or I should say, we're pushing for late December uh, to get at least some units in for those folks that want to, like, spend the year and money, because uh, there's so much more about this camera 
uh, beyond just the dual ISO and beyond uh, the variable ND. There's time code built into the body. There's a brand new viewfinder that's brighter and sharper, and, and it's using the same accessories that you would find in an FS7, so you don't have to buy brand new batteries. You can use the same um, media as well, because it's XQD memory. So, we, you know, and we're working with all our third party companies as well, that um, if anything, there's like some slight modifications they're making for some of those items. Now, in addition, you guys said you had, you said you had a new cine lens that's coming out as well? Yeah, as uh, part of this whole full frame, you know, there's not as much uh, cine, there's not as many cine lenses out there that are full frame. So we're going in that direction. So it's combining the, the ease of use of an E-mount lens with the, you know, the benefits of a cinema lens. So uh, you'll have a lens that's uh, full auto or full manual. And the motor could even be removed. So if you need to put a map box on there and the motor's in a way, you can remove that. The first lens available is going to be a 16 to 35 T3.1. So nice fast lens, nice and wide. Power zoom, servo zoom, controllable with the smart grip on the camera. And that's going to be available in the spring. So this is a 6K sensor. So are you essentially shooting down res to 4K? Correct. So we're shooting an oversampled 4K. So you get more samples, so you get better color reproduction, higher resolution, and the image just looks gorgeous. On top of the dual base ISO technology we got from Venice, we use that same expertise that we used in Venice Color Science to produce a new out-of-the-box color for the FX9. That's called S-Cinetone. So you don't have to be an expert color grader. You can pull the camera out of the box. It's already set to the S-Cinetone. You get beautiful, nice skin tones, nice soft highlight roll-off. It's really beautiful. And I'm assuming this shoots other Sony profiles like S-Log and Cine Profile and all those as well. Absolutely. You still have your hyper gammas, you still have your S-Log, you still have that Cine EI mode where you're, you can shoot and capture all that information off the sensor and grade it yourself. Can you shoot uh, the 6K RAW out to like an Atomos or an another external recording device? There will be an extension unit, the XDCA FX9, uh, and ultimately it will deliver a 16-bit linear RAW out as well as a mode where 4K continuous 120 frame will be at 10 bit out. Now some of these things are coming through firmware upgrades as well as some in-camera features as well. But you will need that, um, that extension unit and we are working with uh, Atomos to have make sure that they have a device that can actually capture that much information. If somebody wants to find out more about this or more about uh, Sony products in general, where can they find you guys on the web? Well, we've got a brand new website called sonycine.com. You'll find uh, information about the uh, FX9 as well as Venice and our other Sony cinema cameras as well. Uh, the standard website for Sony is pro.sony.com. You can find pretty much anything there as well. I'm here with Tim Marino from Western Digital. Tim, what do we got here? So today we're showing our, our typical DIT workflow setup. So I have our shuttle SSD here, and I've got all different various options that we can drop into our shuttle SSD. So from our SSDs to our spinning drives and our individual card readers that can go directly in. So this gives you the versatility on set to drop any kind of camera media in, whether it's Red Mag, CFast, CFast, or Atomos. And then in addition to that, we're showing some of our drives, and these are our fastest options to get media off of these camera cards that cost a lot of money and onto more affordable storage. So we have our G Drive Mobile Pro SSD, which is our NVMe-based drive. So this thing is rugged, portable, and is the fastest drive that we carry in our portable line. And then this is our G Drive SSD EV RAW. And the great thing about this is this bumper drops off and we can drop this directly into our EV adapter. So what kind of productions are you using this? Is, are you seeing it used on commercials, feature films? Commercials, feature films, um, television shows, uh, we, the full gamut, commercial reality, it, it really runs the whole gamut of production. So we have kind of a solution here that will fit any need. What is it, the main client for you guys? Like, What's your go-to in terms of, you work directly with production companies, you work with studios? 
uh, we work directly with production companies, we work with studios, we work with the people that are actually using the products. So I spend a lot of time talking with DITs, loaders, and the people that are actually using this on set, making sure that they have the right tools to get what they're looking for. And what about like individuals? So say you're an indie filmmaker, maybe you can't afford a DIT. Is there a smaller like home game version of this that you would yeah, suggest? So if you we step down here, we have our G drives and our G raids, which really are the step down from this, but still provide you with enterprise class drives and all of the performance that's needed to work with all the 4K footage that we're working with on set these days, and 6K and 8K if we're talking about Sony and RED. And I can use Mac, PC, Avid, anything? Yeah, we are hardware agnostic, so um, they can be formatted for Mac or PC and can work with anything. And how fast do they run now? Like, what kind of buses are they pumping through? So a lot of our newer drives, we're actually saturating the port on Thunderbolt 3. So it really comes down to what the hardware is that we're plugged into as far as how fast the speeds we can get. Fantastic. If somebody wants to know more about this or see what you guys have in store, where can they find you on the web? Uh, www.wd.com or gtechnology.com. I'm here with Jim Amorosino from Felix Lighting. Jim, what are we? What is this thing? What, what, what do we got going on here? Yeah, so uh, so we're here at uh, NAB this year. We're uh, showing off the Quad Matrix. Uh, this is a modular system of our pre-existing matrix units. So uh, basically, uh, within 10 minutes, you can fully pack this uh, frame. You have four units in here, um, and then it just takes like, a minute each. You can pull them out throw it on a yoke. So it's a real great tool for rental and production to be able to package the fixture to what is needed that day on the shoot or that day for the job. And who do you guys deal with mainly? You do mainly deal with production companies? Do you deal with individuals? Yeah, so we do. Uh, so our products are used by, we, we, we just put 25 of these on a Hollywood set with Warner Brothers. Um, they're using them to light a couple of sets. So uh, we work with from the Hollywood productions all the way down to the independent filmmakers. Uh, we our, our product line is pretty diverse in that uh, we we specialize in point. Uh, point source hard lighting, uh, so we could do Fresnel lighting very well, um, and then our take on a on a, on a panel uh, because we're using four sources as opposed to uh, strips of LEDs, uh, we're able to control it and uh, get more uses out of it. And what else have you got here that would sort of complement this guy? Uh, you have single version. You have a single version of this as well. Yeah, so we have a single version, which is a great versatile light. We have these uh, quad Fresnel lenses here. Uh, so this will really focus your beam in, uh, bring it to about 30 degrees and give you about two and a half times extra intensity. So when you use it in a, in a, in a, a, in a rig like this, you could really throw the light nice and far, uh, but you could pull it out. And then uh, this, uh, this is compatible with uh, rag place uh, five foot and seven foot octa. Uh, banks, so um, this will fill like a five foot octa really nicely. Yeah. And I can kind of take these off too and kind of make just a nice soft light source. Yeah, exactly. You could, uh, we're seeing like that, that's one of the biggest uses so far for it is a, a big soft light source. You shoot it through some silks or shoot it through a, a soft box, but you're not uh, locked into just that one soft light because the next day you could throw these on, shoot it through the window, and you have your you have your daylight source right there. So, uh, Jim, if people want to know more about this light or the other the stuff you guys got going on at Felix, where can they find you on the web? Uh, www.felix.com. Uh, if you're in New York City, our rental partners at Candlelight and Grip in Astoria, Queens have everything, uh, and they'd be more than happy to help you out. I'm here with Jason Druss from Black Magic Design, and Jason, what do we have here? Well, thanks very much for having me, Jason. And this is the uh, Black Magic Design uh, Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. This is our newest digital cinema camera, and uh, for the fans of the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, you'll notice that it's pretty much the same exact body with this new replaced turret, which is just a little bit larger. The difference being that this camera has a Super 35 size sensor with the Canon EF lens mounts, and instead of recording 4K, it goes all the way up to 6K in Blackmagic Raw. So you guys came out with the 4K, and that was kind of revolutionary especially for the price point. It was uh, crazy affordable for a camera that packed that much punch. <laughs> for this guy though, it's more money, but you're talking 6K as opposed to 4K, a bigger sensor. Kind of talk about the differences between the two, if you would. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before going into the differences, I think it's important to go into the similarities, being the, the number one question I get is everyone says the Pocket 4K has the really excellent dual native ISO of 400 and 3200. Does the 6K follow in its footsteps? And the answer is yes, it does. 
So this also has a dual native ISO with the Super 35 sensor and Canon EF lens mount. That's pretty much one of the only differences, really. The sensor size, the resolution, and the, uh, the lens mount. EF versus Micro Four Thirds. But they both record to Blackmagic RAW on Canon CFast 2.0 cards as well as SD cards and the SSD flash drives when you plug them into the USB-C port. In terms of like the post-production on this, do I have to run everything through DaVinci before I run it to say Final Cut or, or, or Adobe Premiere or can I take it right from the camera and, and put it in whatever editing system I use? Uh, not at all. And I'll say that also because Blackmagic RAW is a really, really excellent lightweight RAW codec that has an advanced D mosaic and process happening in the camera, churning while you're shooting the video. So it's going to uh, be uh, very lightweight and run very easily on many, many machines all the way up to 6K resolution. But having said that, with the new Blackmagic RAW 1.5 update that we released at IPC this year, uh, we announced that we are we have plugins ready to go uh, into Premiere Pro and Avid Media Composer. So when you install the update, if you have Premiere or Media Composer installed on your computer, the um, plugins will be installed from us. So you can natively work in uh, Premiere and Avid Media Composer with the Blackmagic RAW files. So if you don't want to use Resolve, that's cool. You can use those other two apps now also. What types of projects are you seeing people use this with? Ever since we released our first cinema camera, we knew, well, we didn't know how people would use it. And it turns out people use our cameras for everything. You know, where the Pocket 6K might be the perfect Hollywood DP's B-Unit crash cam. It's another independent filmmaker's you know, dream A-cam to have something in the palm of their hands that can shoot 6K RAW with a Super 35 sensor and an EF lens mount. You know? So really, all of the above. Whether you're doing you know, event video, corporate video, documentaries, you know, long-form feature films and episodic television. You know, our cameras have been used for everything and more, and I see no exception for the Pocket 6K and the Pocket 4K. Okay, so now I'm going to challenge you a little bit, because one of the complaints about Blackmagic has been the battery life. And you guys came out with a battery pack for the 4K. Or is there a battery pack for this, or can I use the same one for the for the uh, for this same body? You're going to be able to use that battery pack on the 6K as well, because it's literally the identical body except for the the lens turret on the top. So you're going to be able to, to use that perfectly fine. And the the thing to say about the battery life is that it's really a, a give and take. Because when we designed this camera, we knew that the users of the original Pocket Cinema camera, the HD one, wanted an upgrade, but we got an overwhelming amount of support for more of the features stemming from the Ursa Mini and the Ursa Mini Pro. So we wanted the smallest body possible while incorporating everything from the Ursa Mini and Ursa Mini Pro that we could, like the Blackmagic operating system, a big five inch touchscreen, you know, a really great air intake outtake system to keep the sensor cool and, you know, more manual buttons and function buttons that you see on the side here, and in addition to SD card, CFast, and the USB recording. So in order to do all those things, we had to make the camera just a little bit bigger, you know? So it kept the same philosophy as the original Pocket Cinema camera. And then leading into the batteries, the way we figure it is, if you really want to use that camera handheld, you totally can. We designed the ergonomics for it to hold it right in front of, your, uh, right in front of you and use it. And you're probably going to have like a, a fanny pack or some kind of bag with a bunch of those Canon LPE6 batteries. And it's not that big of a deal to swap out a $30, 30 to $50 battery every 45 minutes to an hour. But then we also knew that many of our users use these cameras as a modular cinema system. So we wanted to create a form factor in a shape where you could easily add on your own rails, your own backplate, your own V-mount and goal mount uh, power options, whatever the users wanted to do. If you're using it in a certain way, the camera needed to be versatile enough to work with either kind of workflow. And that's why we stuck with the Canon LPE6, and that's why you know the battery life's a little short by itself. How well is this thing working for me out of the box? Like, if I get the camera, pop a lens on it, can I run and go, or do I have to add other stuff to it? We designed this camera to be a pop a lens on it, pop a battery in it, throw the card in, and get shooting. You know, especially with the ergonomics of it, the five inch touch screen, you can, the Blackmagic operating system, which not only lets you very easily mount your, your um, custom recording and codec and resolution settings, but when it comes to things like focus assist, false color, um, focus peaking, um, zebras, frame guides, this is designed to take it out of the box, throw on the unnecessary accessories and get out there and start shooting. This also comes with software? 
It comes with DaVinci Resolve? So it's actually still the, the downloadable Resolve, and it's DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is what we call the paid version, you know, for the folks at home. We've got the free version of the software that we just call DaVinci Resolve. The paid version that normally retails for $299 is DaVinci Resolve Studio. And whenever you buy a Pocket 4K or a 6K or any kind of Ursa Mini camera, the paid version, DaVinci Resolve Studio, comes free in the box. You'll get an activation code where you can download the software from the website, put in that activation code, and now you own DaVinci Resolve Studio. Are there new features that have come out recently with 16 that weren't in the previous version? Always, always. Any, anyone that knows us knows that every year uh, when a new version of Resolve comes out, it's packed with hundreds of new features. And this year we added a completely new page into DaVinci Resolve, the new Cut page, which is the fastest editing system ever made. We knew there was a whole culture of editors out there, short form editors, broadcast editors, news editors, and they've really never had an editing software package made for them. Everyone working in short form has just been working within long form tools. So we wanted to create an, a faster edit page, and we knew that we couldn't make our edit page faster without completely destroying the program. So we thought, since Resolve is already a system built on the same timeline being shown multiple ways, let's just build a new, different kind of editing page right next door to the uh, other one. So we call it the cut page, and it follows the law of manufacturing, which we have a lot of experience in. And the laws of manufacturing state that any movement that doesn't result in productive work is considered waste. So things like zooming in on the timeline, finding the right clip in the bin, finding the right specific trim tool and getting on the cut exactly to trim. All these different kinds of tasks have been eliminated because the user interface exists in a way that only productive work is allowed as a movement. So fast assembly type edits um, are really great for the cut page. And then when you want to go ahead and do more nuanced, long form editing and take advantage of Resolve's really advanced, you know, curve tools and really advanced custom transition tools, you can just hop over to the edit page, same exact timeline, just a different way to view the information. What kind of projects would I be cutting on the cut page as opposed to the edit page? Uh, well, at first I'd say if you're starting out, you know, when you're doing short form projects like commercials and things like that for commercial editors, but at the end of the day, after I've been using it for about six months, I don't think I'll ever start any kind of edit again on the edit page. I think I'm going to start everything on the cut page using the new editor keyboard, and then maybe eventually I'm going to find my way over to the edit page when I hit any kind of limit where, okay, I want all of my really detailed effects library tools and all that stuff then I'll go over to the edit page. But for me, I'm going to use the software left to right across each page. And I think most users, once they start using the cut page, especially with the new editor keyboard, are going to find a similar workflow. Now, I've been looking at, because I just downloaded DaVinci recently, I've been looking at like a sea of YouTube videos and things like that. Do you guys have any place where I can go to online and learn the software a little bit better? We have so much training. It's, it's crazy. So we're really, really proud of, proud of this, very happy about this, but we've got about 10 or 11 hours of long-form professional video training on the website, going across every discipline and resolve from editing, color, Fusion VFX, Fairlight Audio. You can not only follow along with these professional trainers, you can actually download their source material and follow along with them as they're doing it. In addition to that, we have five complete textbooks. Now these are not cut and dry manuals, these are fun, interactive, puts you in the driver's seat. We're going to learn Resolve by doing an actual job, learn each part of each page. We have a 101 definitive guidebook that gets you across the whole software package at an intermediate level or beginner's level. And then we've got four advanced books, a book for advanced editing, one for color correction, one for Fusion VFX, and one just for Fairlight Audio. Not only can you download the PDFs of all five textbooks online for free, we actually offer you access to the official certification exams online for free. So if you're a student and you want to get Resolve certified for a college application or once you're out of college to get your entry-level job in post-production, you can do that. And if you're a large company and you're thinking about using Resolve, but how are we going to get 30 to 50 editors transferred over? You can know with confidence that everyone has baseline competencies on the software by using the training material that we provided and having your employees or coworkers use your use the certification exams. Fantastic. And where can people find all this greatness on the web? Blackmagicdesign.com. And then you can go to the DaVinci Resolve page and you can find the training page, the download pages on the support page. It's, it's all at blackmagicdesign.com.
And that's all we have time for today. Thank you for taking this trip down the rabbit hole. Be sure to tune in next week for more of our NAB show coverage. And for more of our content, including our movie reviews, visit our website, norestfortheweekendpodcast.com. You can also find us on all your favorite podcast apps. And now we're on Patreon, so you can find us on patreon.com slash no rest of the weekend once again i'd like to thank everyone who had the chance to chat with me at nab it was a great time we'll be sure to be back there next year and for behind the rabbit productions i'm jason godby thanks for joining us we'll see you next time 